Very good. It is 638 following the meeting of the Weekly Select Board to Order. First item of the agenda meeting minutes from the meeting of December 21st. Any comments? No comments. None for me either. I would uh, move that we uh, approve the meeting minutes from December 21st. Second. On the have to vote by roll call. Julie. Yes. Joyce. In favor. Aye. Then from paywall warns. Any questions? <clears throat> no. Nope. Uh, public comment. Do we have any comments yeah, from public yes. items not on the agenda? Yes. Yeah. Judy. I'd Judy. like to I know. I'll be brief. Um, I know that this select board is very concerned about the um, property tax burden on many senior citizens. And I wanted to encourage the town to do more or to do something to promote the senior circuit breaker tax credit. This is, I don't know how familiar you, you three are with it. It's a state tax credit. Um, that for property owners, uh, if the extent to which your property tax payments plus half of your water and sewer fees exceed 10% of your income, you get a credit from the state, cash credit or deduction from your income tax. If you rent, it's the amount, it's the amount that 25% of your rent paid exceeds 10%. Um, the cap for this credit is $2,590. Their income limits uh, $69,000 for a single individual, $86,000 for head of household, and $103,000 for married couples. They're not they're not low limits, but they are income limits. If, if you don't pay taxes, and I think a lot of seniors, low income seniors do not and do not file for taxes, you get the credit back in cash, but you have to file an income tax form with a CB schedule. I think a lot of people don't know about this. I'm pleased to see that on the assessor's page at the Waitley website, there is an updated description. But I was hoping that the board could see that a letter goes out to townspeople over 65. Um, I, last year when Lynn Sibley was still treasurer, she and Amy Schrader and I talked about this and they have the capabilities to send letters just to households over 65. So it could be targeted. Also, I think a letter could go in, a note could go in the school. I think the CB schedules could be made available at the library, um, at town offices. But it would really help to have people know about this and also to know more about the abatements in town. There's nothing on the town website anymore about the abatements. Okay. So that's it. Thank you. They uh, the issue of the circular came up when we had the tax mm -hmm. rate discussion mm -hmm. in December, and yep. we came to the consensus that we wanted to try to encourage it. And now that the holiday season is over, we can look more seriously at what the town can do to publicize that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's good timing. The scoop has come out in March. People are starting to think about their taxes. The tax forms will show up in in uh, places. Yeah, we'll see what we do. We may be able to do a letter, scoop. Yeah. I think I think someone knowledgeable on this could write an article for the scoop, and I am maybe looking at the screen at someone who's knowledgeable about this. Would you be willing to um, write something? I'll write the article scoop? for the scoop, but I would. Yeah. I okay. Thank you. I'm happy to write it. I think it would have more oomph if it came from the town somehow. That may yeah. be in addition to a, a note from the town. Right. It would. I think it in addition. I I sent a handout to to Brian uh, this morning. Maybe didn't get it, but with an mm -hmm. article by 
It was an op-ed piece that was in the recording that explains it very, very well, I think. Okay. Yeah, this is really the question of publicizing it. Yeah. You gotta figure I'll out touch base, it. touch base with Brian. Okay. Any other public comments? Items not on the agenda. I have one that, that was submitted that I yeah, okay. was asked that it would be read um, at the one January 9th meeting, but that was moved tonight. Um, from Dan Dennehy, dated 12-18-2023. I would like to suggest that Brian be given the authority to pursue the purchase of the three-phase town office generator. The town voted 30, approximately $30,000 several annual town meetings ago for this purchase. As I understand that the as I understand delivery of the generator was about one year from order date. Hopefully this will amount, hopefully this amount will cover the generator purchase. I suspect more money may be required for installation of electrical hookup to the town office grid. A similar generator was recently installed at the water department pumping station near the center of the town. Thank you for your time, Dan Dennis. Brian, if you can look into whether that 30,000 would cover <clears throat> What it would cover and what might be necessary to, yeah, for additional money for the electrical company. Yeah, and I'll follow the key because he was the one doing the original. He's okay. Original light work on this. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds good. Next, scheduled appointments. I see we have Nick Spagnola here from Club Castaway. Greetings. Um, Present. Why don't you tell us? What's been going on since your reopening and how that relates to the terms of your variance? Just um, generally speaking, I think things have been uh, going fairly well. Um, just to reiterate, I mean, hours of operation right now are Wednesday through Saturday, 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, we have reintroduced amateur night. Uh, we have some contests planned, like best pole dance, uh, best dancer, entertainer of the year, showgirl of the year. Um, we moved all special events or um, any type of like, just any type of, of theme night, like an amateur night. We moved that all to like Friday, Saturday. So just kind of to stay in line with the detail. Um, it's kind of st standard. I mean, it's been it's been a uh, pretty standard. I, I I would say this um, as far as like the detail. Hopefully the the board knows um, that we are we're in favor of the detail. It's not not a question. I think uh, only thing we would ask is that it it has been has been really busy. Some of our our contest night, like the amateur night, those nights we've seen you know up to like fifty people come in and everything has been extremely smooth on those nights. No no issues. Um, I think we've we've rolled it out. Uh, only complaint we got one time was from a, a gentleman who was upset with our security checkpoint at the door. He felt it was uh, too much like TSA, and he sent us a, a long email, and we thought that was really funny, but it's what it's what has to be done. Um, but uh, as far as, like, the details, so Wednesday, Thursday, it's kind of an off night for us. So on Wednesdays, we start, so we're going to roll out some karaoke tomorrow, just kind of uh, just uh, some fun stuff between 9 and 11. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it, it generates some uh, some customers through the door. I think people still generally don't know that that we're open and we're working on that. But what I would ask is if the board would allow for just the detail on, on Friday, Saturday. And uh, Wednesday, Thursday has been noticeably slower. Any type of event that we have, like a, an amateur night or any of these kind of dance contests that we have coming up, um, we're moving those to, those are all weekend stuff. So like Friday and Saturday. So only thing we really do during the week is like a karaoke hour from nine to 11. And uh, that's really, we have a disco party coming up. That's on Saturday. That's the 20th. So just kind of keeping those, those special nights to Friday, Saturday. Um, we have some other ideas, but we, we just know better if it, if it, if it's a, an event a feature act or something totally out of the ordinary, we know to, to work with the police chief and, and get a detailed schedule, whether that be on a Wednesday night when we don't have a detail or um, any other day that we, we would be able to open. But kind of wondering if it's possible just to stick with the Friday, Saturday detail. Those are the busiest nights and just maybe check back in in a few months and just see see how we do. And if you, if you have anything specific uh, for me, I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Okay. Um, I've seen some advertising you've had in the newspapers for your special events, and parking lot seems to be busy on Friday and Saturday nights whenever I've gone by. Uh, Chief, if you can weigh in on this on what you would think um, would be the whether you would approve of or be okay with cutting back the detail to just Friday and Saturday night. Okay. <clears throat> um, honestly, I I agree with uh, I agree with Nick. The Thursday night detail. Um, there there usually isn't too too much activity. Not not many people there. Uh, it seems to be that Friday and Saturdays are the are the busier days. <clears throat> so I wouldn't I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, I think since our last discussion, it's been pretty pretty smooth sailing. We had there was two incidents that were reported by detail officers. Um, nothing major. I think uh, it's noteworthy to to bring them up just because um, what was told to me was that the the staff handled everything appropriately. And there was no um, no concern with how they handled it, so that was a, a positive thing from that perspective. I think one of them was um, a, a medical issue that they resolved out in the back. Um, ended up getting the individual's um, spouse to come pick them up, so there was no issue there. There was a another issue between two two parties, two uh, entertainers. There was a disturbance that was. Uh, that was handled inside the club again handled handled appropriately uh, all parties were um, escorted out and left um, unfortunately they came back later which had nothing to do really with castaways um, they they didn't leave town so that kind of filtered out into the into the road which um, turned into more of a, a police response call but again from the castaways perspective um, those situations were handled handled appropriately as the opinion of the uh, officers that were there. But other than that, um, I've had some good discussions with Nick about moving forward and um, kind of keeping the lines of communication open up. And um, there was no no other issues to report from the, the three days a week that we've been um, filling those details. So again, I wouldn't have a problem going to just Friday and Saturday. Okay. And Nick, as long as you... And Jim, as long as you communicate, if you're going to have any events, you know, larger events scheduled for not a Friday or Saturday, that you two talk and arrange for detail, if that looks necessary. I would, I, I would, I would hesitate to vote right now on that. Okay. I just, I, um, I haven't really had enough time to think about it or look into the things that Jim just mentioned about the two incidents. Okay. Um, so I'd rather not make a decision on that tonight. Julie, any? I, I think I'd go with Joyce. Um, I don't think it's uh, an out of line request, but I, I agree with Joyce. Okay. Um, then why don't we talk to Jim about what the incidents were and how they were handled. Brian, we can put this in the agenda for two weeks from now. Yeah, so the, the, the four months from whenever, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, looking back to October, we'll, so the, the it would be February 4th is what we had talked about. So the January 30th meeting would be when the board would discuss this. Well, that's when it would yeah. discuss this matter again. Yeah, okay. That was okay. It. So we'll leave it the way it is for the next two weeks, then we'll come back and revisit it in our meeting in two weeks. Is that okay, Nick? Totally fine. As always, happy to shed light <clears throat> on anything that uh, needs some more narrative. But uh, yeah, fair enough. Hopefully, hopefully things pick up going into the spring. And um, I think the board will just eventually see we have no problem getting detailed schedules whenever we need it. It's not not an issue. And it's, it's a huge help for us. Just maintain the parking lot. And uh, yeah, it just brings in brings in a good crowd, it brings in a better crowd. So and that's all we're focused on is just providing the best entertainment possible. And we have a good culture there. I want to stay focused on their mission. Details great. And just need to uh, get through the winter. So, but appreciate everything. So, Joyce, um, do you have any other questions for Nick? No, no. Thank you very much. Okay, Nick. Appreciate thank it. you very much.
we'll we'll be back in a couple of weeks when we talk about this some more. Okay. All right. Signing okay. off. Thank you all. Next, we Judy Markland from the Planning Board to discuss a request from the Planning Board to support S1319 slash H2082, an act regarding municipal zoning patterns. Judy, if you can brief us on that. Thank you, Fred. Yes, uh, the Planning Board voted unanimously to ask that the town support this bill, uh, which was filed by Senator Comerford and a representative, I think, from Palmer. Um, it would remove, a, you should have a letter from us, mm -hmm. by the way, with some background, which I hope you've read. Uh, it would remove one sentence in Mass General Law 40, Section 40A, Section 3. This is the section in the town law state laws that uh, describe uh, exemptions from zoning regulations by local communities. The, the sentence is no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy, except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare. This was this section of the state laws was passed in the mid 80s. And at that point, there were no large scale solar facilities that so what the solar generating and collecting facilities that were available were small ones, uh, often on buildings, if, if not exclusively. So what we are Asked, and I think everyone believes that the legislature never intended that this exemption apply to the large scale solar facilities. But unfortunately, a court case in 2022 has, um, has changed that. So now they do. As background, and, and why I'm so convinced of this. Um, when large scale solar ground mounted solar facilities first came out, hmm. the, the Department of Energy actually developed a template for local communities to use as their basis for their solar bylaws. And Waitley used this in ours, um, we adopted it in 2010. The understanding was that just the smaller facilities were exempt and so the template called for exclusion of facilities that produce 20, 250 kilowatt or less or had a very small acreage. Um, as I said, everyone assumed that this was the case and then in 2022 there was a court case Tracy Realty versus the town of Waltham that, and the court, the state court determined that the bylaw exclusion did in fact apply to large solar facilities. Naturally, the wording of this case is a bit vague and it's not very clear now exactly what the restrictions are, what you can do or can't do. One thing that has become quite clear is that now standalone battery storage is considered to be covered by this exclusion. Uh, this was something that had never crossed my mind, but I guess that's a solar collecting device under the terms of the bylaw. Uh, whether, in fact, it has the amount of energy that's being collected comes from solar or not, it, it's covered under the exclusion. Uh, that's, in my mind, uh, another real reason to get this undone. Unlike most communities, Whiteley chose to 
make solar eligible in almost all of our zoning districts. Only Agres one along the streets can't have solar. And we relied on site plan review and special permit um, size limits in, in the bylaw for protection. Also the resource remediation fee that Joyce is far too familiar with um, to make up for any agricultural or, or timber land that was taken. I doubt now whether those size limits would be enforceable. I'm not, I don't know, but I do know that Chutesbury tried to design a bylaw that would meet the conditions of the Waltham court decision and the attorney general turned it down as, as ineligible. Wheatley has no revision safety requirements or anything for standalone battery, battery facilities now. They are not mentioned in our zoning and therefore we had assumed that they were not allowed. Um, I think at this point, that's not a tenable position either. Mm -hmm. But I think the real point here is that what this bill would do is restore the local siting control to what we had before, thought we had before, believed we had before, and what I believe the legislature always intended when they passed this bylaw. If you look at chapter 40A, section three, the solar pr provision is wedged between a restriction on you can't regulate handicap accessible ramp ramps and on one side and on the other side, you can't regulate the height of ham radio antennas. I mean, this is the kind of thing they were thinking about when they adopted this bylaw. So I would urge that the town draft a letter and send it to Senator Mark and Representative Blay. Um, I don't think either have taken positions on this. Anybody else in the audience have any comments on this? My only question Hi, is- Hi, sorry, <laughs> it took me a second to unmute oh, I'm myself. Sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, and, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm just here to support Judy and uh, I think I feel very strongly about it. I think um, it's very important that the town have the opportunity to regulate location. And if, especially with um, lithium ion batteries, which can be very dangerous and they're still um, explosions that occur. New York State is concerned about this. And um, it's just something that the town should be considering. Um, we don't want to burn up the town because we can't regulate where these things go. Uh, so just for great, can you identify yourself? Sorry, Ann Lomely, yeah. uh, 7 Claverack Road, Waitley. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. Judy, I. It's not specifically stated, but I assume that removing this sentence from the code would alleviate the whole problem. That this sentence is what is being relied on by the courts. Yes. Okay, and that so sentence just... is the whole, that sentence is the whole paragraph, the whole subject of solar regulation in, in that bylaw. Okay, so I, I just wanted to clarify with that, that yeah. there, was, there weren't other clauses that might be relevant. No. There's nothing else. Um, I'm sorry. Upper one. Upper. Chris yeah, Kellogg. Chris Kellogg. Hi, uh, Christopher Kellogg, 163 Chestnut Plain Road in Waitley. I do echo uh, Judy's comments. I think uh, water supply is probably one of our most important things, um, and it has been an issue in the past. And I think we have to consider containment systems and proper sitement uh, on that. Um, as uh, Ann has mentioned, there has been battery storage fires. Uh, we have a limited uh, volunteer uh, fire department. Uh, New York is the most recent case, but Arizona is also there. And I would like to see it put back into the town's hands for the zoning laws. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? One more comment. 
One more Here's comment. I, to my knowledge, this is the only industry that is exempt from siting, local siting controls. Um, agriculture is, but I don't think that that's really an industry in this sense. Okay. Um, any other comments, public? Joyce? Um, I think as, especially as you're working on something for batteries, I think this is probably a good idea to be able to put some, yeah. <laughs> some, yeah, especially regarding safety. I mean, I don't, I guess I don't disagree with the sentiment that we shouldn't be like, we shouldn't be unreasonable about citing solar and battery facilities. But if anything you do is considered unreasonable, that's not reasonable either. Does that make sense? So yeah. I yeah. think I think we have a fairly sensible planning board and town in general. It's not really trying to stand up and get in the way of, of anything happening anywhere for any reason. But I think like, for example, I, I share Chris's concern about uh, containment and um, and being able to go in and inspect for the, the correct fire suppression system, which is not a water-based system and so on. I think those are all reasonable things for us to regulate in a bylaw that I, you guys are working on at this point for, for energy storage. So I, I would have no trouble signing a letter to support that, um, that proposal. Yeah, I, I would not either. I think that the sentence there hinges upon the Supreme Judicial Court's interpretation of the word unreasonably. And if <laughs> yeah. they, if that, that's the key word in the whole thing. And if they consider almost any regulation to be unreasonable, then I would agree that we should get rid of the sentence. Julie, any comments? I would agree with both of you. And Judy, I appreciate your bringing this to our attention. I'd be happy to sign a letter in support of the planning board and in support of a, uh, hang on, what are you requesting? Let me just double check. Yeah, to support, support the, to support the, the. A letter to the to our state. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah, do we need a vote? Okay. Um, uh, I, so you want us to vote now? Yeah. Or? Sure. Okay. Um, I uh, vote. I propose. Sorry. I move. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll get it. Um, I move that we uh, sign a draft letter in support of S thirteen nineteen slash H twenty eighty two, an act regarding municipal zoning powers. When uh, Brian drafts it. Second. Any further discussion? Vote, Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Okay. Judy, thank you for your Thanks, time. Judy. Thank you. And then Chris, he's no. Chris yeah. one. Thank you for your input. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. Uh oh, Chris was still there. He's moving now. Um Next item will business to review a draft intermunicipal agreement for a shared town account position with the town of Shelburne. Brian? Sure, this is a, a continuation of our discussion about um, how we will how we will employ a town account in the future. Um, it's likely that the, the Brocock uh, regional accounting program is going to go by the wayside and um, had discussions with the town of Shelburne, that's who our uh, accountant currently works for, or the town that the town provides services to, and there's interest both Shelburne and Liberty to continue employing this town accountant. Um, so towards the end, this was a intermunicipal agreement that has been a that has been drafted. Um, there's still some details that need to be worked out, but I I just wanted to um, show this to the board to let you know what the, what the thoughts are at this point. Um, and then obviously they'll have to be uh, a little bit, there'll need to be some more detail about what, what we think the cost will be. The next step is going to be for uh, myself and the Shelburne Town Administrator to sit down with the town accountant and try to figure out some more specific details of the terms of employment um, before we 
uh, go much further with this, but the way it's laid out currently is that, and I don't have a strong preference one way or the other, is that is that way would be the lead town. So we would be the employer, um, and we would share costs, share time and costs mm -hmm. for the town account 50-50. That's really currently how it is now. Um, so it's split costs equally. Both towns would have um, the, the space for the for the, the shared employee to do the, the work of, of the respective towns. Um, each town would procure, you know, their own. I wish we could share the software, the account software, but each town would would procure their own software, be responsible for, you know, all other aspects of that. Uh, we would share, but like I said, we would we would split costs equally. Um, right now, it's right as a three year agreement. There's obviously, uh, like most of our IMAs, there's early termination that's possible. Um, typically, with these types of agreements, it's early termination. Like six months notice, right? And up to like everybody's committed for that fiscal year, essentially, right? It's yeah. it, 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 we're going to go fiscal year to fiscal year because that's how our respective funding work. Um, but that's that's the idea here. Um, we'll Do you anticipate to... that we should approve this before we buy and have the details, or is this informational and we'll try to wrap it all up at the same time? Um, I don't think we should. Uh, I, I don't yeah. think the board should vote on this tonight. Okay, yeah, just, um, oh, okay, just yeah. Um, make, make it clear. Yeah, because I, I want to make sure that that yeah. we have some yeah, right, right, right. place and, and put out and put out a, a tentative budget and sort of see how those how all those costs. And the only other question out. I have is does Darrow work for any other towns that have not opted in? It's, she just her work has been split between Shelburne and Waverly. Okay. So there's no no one else. They might want to nobody, come will in feel, nobody will feel left out. Oh, okay. Um, okay. That I can think about. Um, but it really just thoughts about Waitley being the lead town. Um, you know, we would um, we'd be the employer, so we would provide the benefits. Um, yeah. We would pay all those types of things if there was any uh, crazy things. We would, you know, we would have to pay workers' compensation or unemployment costs if those things were to arise, but those are costs that we're going to we can share. Right. Yeah. 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 The same time those are And that would be the same cost whether Shelburne was the lead. Um, right. Right. That wouldn't make it. It seemed like that was the case. Right. And there may be differences that, that we'll compare once we get into the details about um, how oh. much Shelburne pays for insurance. Um, oh. You know, Whaley pays a certain percentage of Health insurance for employees, yeah. Shelburne may pay a different amount. Um, yeah, but yeah, those are the, the right. details. But this is the the idea at this point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that that seems like, reasonable to me. Sounds like a good plan, and we'll see it again when. Yeah. And I was going to ask if town, if town council had looked at it or if that would happen later. Um, I will have so Shelburne's council has looked at it, and I'll ask ours to do it when it's uh. What is your final comment? Julie, any comments? No. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on to new business. See updates on recently completed and ongoing projects to discuss grant opportunities and other priorities for future grants and projects. I assume this is Sylvie's department. Yes, I think that's me. Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, so. I will endeavor to give you a succinct um, overview of what, what's been going on and a couple of things that are coming up. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, we uh, have been um, waiting to hear back about our fleet assessment for our, um, uh, with uh, Weston and Sampson, they're doing a, they're taking a look at our uh, municipal fleet to give us some recommendations for electric or high vehicles um, that we might want to consider um, in moving forward. Um, we expect that they will be wrapping up uh, sometime this week, I think was the last we heard. Um, and at that point, uh, Brian and I will meet with them and with the department heads and hear a draft of their study and get a sense of uh, what they've come up with um, before they finalize things. Um, so there'll be more coming from that. Um, some of their uh, recommendations for vehicles and um, as well as uh, a little bit of a discussion about charging stations um, for the vehicles. Um, and then uh, related to that, um, 
uh, we have a highway department pickup truck that is slated to be replaced um, sooner rather than later. So we did uh, reach out to Weston and Sampson and just ask for some information on some vehicles that would be um, a good replacement for that truck if we wanted to go um, with an electric vehicle or um, a hybrid plug-in vehicle, um, something of that sort. So um, uh, Keith is looking over the options and um, will give us his um, his assessment of what would be best. And then there are a couple programs based on, um, depending on the need for, for the vehicle, um, specifically uh, the sort of like weight class of the vehicle um, and some some uh, details like that. Um, there are a couple of different programs. Um, there is an incentive program, uh, mass uh, electric vehicle incentive program. And then there's also a Massachusetts uh, rebate program for electric vehicles. So we have a few things that we could look into um, specifically for replacing that truck um, as that is the more pressing need. And then we'll have to um, figure out how we want to work that all into our sort of bigger picture fleet um, assessment and, um, you know, for upcoming vehicles, um, what we want to do. Um, and I think that uh, the charging stations will be a, um, a sort of a the more particular part of that they'll want to figure out um, so that we have reliable um, and easy to use charging locations. Um, and then, so for Christian Lane flooding. Um, uh, before, let's yeah. just, I just want to make sure that the uh, report does have extensive consideration of the charging stations because without the infrastructure to support the electric vehicles, they're sort of useless. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> as far as location, you know, costs of installing, you know, what level of electrical power we need, you know, all that I would hope would be in that report because um, we just had a meeting of the capital committee and that was one of the major questions. Okay, you can want an electric vehicle, but if you don't have yeah, the infrastructure in place to charge them, mm -hmm. it's not good. Yeah. yeah, I would hope that that would be contained in the report, too. And we'll certainly ask if it is not there um, and make sure that we have all that information. Well, I want to make sure it's as fleshed out. The, the options are as fleshed out as possible in the report. So we don't have to go mm -hmm. back and have a lot of questions on it afterwards. Okay. Any other comments on electric vehicle before we move yeah. on to the next grant subject? Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry if you already said this, but when is this report roughly uh, going to be ready for us to take a look at? Um, so I was told that they are wrapping up their evaluation and the, I believe the draft of their report sometime this week. So I expect that maybe it would be sent over to us sometime next week and we could pass that along. Um, but so it's a matter of weeks. It's soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Next. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, with respect to Christian Lane flooding, uh, we he submitted an uh, application for the BRIC grant, that is the Building Resilient Infrastructures and in Communities. Uh, we submitted that last week. Um, and uh, the scope of work encompass that we, you know, envision en encompasses uh, community engagement, base mapping, topogra topographic surveys, um, site visits, and the development of designs based on whatever is discovered in a broader um, investigation into the the stormwater flooding issue that is um, happening on Christian Lane. Um, so the the built infrastructure there, the the um, the pipe system that we've talked about previously, um, but also taking a look at the um, behaviors of the the watershed in um, during periods of heavier precipitation and seeing if there are um, nature based um, uh, solutions that we can implement um, that would sort of alleviate some of the uh, pressure on that one spot in in the drainage system. Um, so that is uh, sort of what we are hoping to do. It's a um, it's a planning. Uh, this is a grant for a planning project. 
Um, and we got some help um, from folks at Berkshire Design just to sort of get an idea of what would go into the planning phase um, and how long it would take and the costs. Um, so we submitted a grant application um, and I think uh, we'll be hearing back about it in, in a number of months, um, probably not not terribly soon, but um, we we estimated that the project that we're talking about might take about six months, mm -hmm. and um, the cost estimate that we were given and that we used for the grant application was for around eighty five thousand. Um, and uh, the program covers the the grant program would cover seventy five percent of the cost. So there's a matching portion of twenty five percent, five percent of which can be administrative. Um, but uh, we can certainly um, get more granular about all of that um, uh, if we are selected to move forward. Um, but fingers crossed, um, that would be a great place to start with finding a long-term solution for, for the stormwater flooding. Any questions great. on that one? Great. Okay. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and then also on Christian Lane, um, there's the Christian Lane culvert. And um, if I'm not mistaken, we are going to be looking to submit a uh, an application for again for um, the Culbert Replacement Municipal Assistance Grant um, to try and take the work that was already done for um, looking into uh, 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 replacing that culvert um, and uh, see about. Um, potentially, I guess, a construction project um, with the designs that we already have. But um, again, this is a little bit further out. I just wanted to put it on your radar. Um, requests for responses will probably be out um, uh, next month. So that's something we'll be looking a little bit more into and, and talking uh, more with Brian about. That, so that's one that's not ready to go yet, but it's going to be submitted soon, you said? Um, that's one that we we haven't put together our new application, but um, this okay. uh, before my time here that um, you all did um, the sort of design work for for the the culvert in that in that air location. Um, okay. So we want to be building on that work to try and actually get a new culvert going in there. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's an old friend of a grant program. Yes. <laughs> okay. Anything okay. else? Um, yes. Uh, so just quickly, I also wanted to um, just mention, um, I submitted an expression of interest to the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, grant program, um, about doing some uh, pollinator-focused habitat work that would um, be sort of working towards um, some of our, addressing some of the concerns in our MVP plan, specifically flooding, uh, drought, and invasive species. Um, so I had um, attended a, uh, a, a Zoom educational um, session, um, and I reached out to um, Evan Abrams from Landscape Interactions, and um, we, we met uh, and looked at some areas in town that we could potentially do some pollinator focused uh, habitat work. Um, and so some of that would be in more visible places, um, potentially around the town offices and around the library out back. And I did talk to Cindy at the library, um, just mentioned it to her and get her feedback. She thought it would be nice to make that um, a more engaging space for visitors and that it would also be a nice um, place to um, be able to do some of that important habitat work. Um, and then also there's um, potentially, um, uh, and we could talk more about this, but um, there's a good amount of land around the, the town water source. Um, and in that particular area, we went out to look at it and there are some invasives in that in that um, in that spot there, so we could work to remediate some of the invasive species um, and uh, make that area healthier. Um, so that's uh, something we're thinking of too. Um, so the uh, the project would be potentially three to four locations, so we could think about those spots, and then if there are other areas that come up as being um, particularly like beneficial spots to do this work. Um, 
we could look at a fourth location. Um, and so that project would be um, also a planning project um, and it would maybe take about a year. Uh, and let's see, that would be for designs and site visits and outreach and spatial analysis and research. And that would be in the range of 78,000. So that's another thing that um, uh, I'll be looking to submit an application for, um, uh, you know, with your blessing. And if you think that's something to move forward with, um, I think it could be a pretty cool project. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm an avid gardener and have planted for pollinators and birds around our house. So I heartily support the town going in that direction. Wonderful. And I know um, JP's wife also works on pollinator uh, gardens. So that's great too. And, um, and FERCOG um, does, is doing a, um, a pollinator uh, corridor project, and I did also ask them to put us on their list for their next phase, but I don't know when that funding is going to be starting, so I thought it would be great to sort of get going with a, an individual project first and then hopefully join on to the corridor work, too. Um, and then lastly, I'll just tell you that the bicycle maintenance stations have been installed and are ready for use, and we'll put out a little... Um, notification in the early spring so that cyclists can be in the know but they look great and uh we're very happy with them yeah, didn't the, the scoop as well yeah, yeah you should definitely write something for the scoop i thought i yeah. saw something in the reporter about that though um so i think we may have already gotten a I bit of the yes i guess thank you chris thank you chris yeah Good so the job, word is chris. <laughs> Do, do we have any way to monitor usage? Is there any anything in them that it would yeah. have to be replaced or that we could? Um, so we do have some replacement parts. I don't expect that we'll need to replace anything for a couple of years, but we do have replacement tools and um, some replacement hoses for the air pump. Uh, part of the equipment. Um, so I suppose the easiest thing would be if anybody um, wants to report that there's a problem with one of them, you can write to community development at waitley.org. That's my email and um, let me know. Um, I don't have any, you know, tracking software on the, the maintenance stations or anything like that. Um, but we could just let somebody in the town office know. <laughs> yes, there's a way to track. Yeah, how much they're getting. Used. Yeah, yeah, or even just you can ask, you can you can put on that same side. Hey, let us know if you use this, or, or I don't know, but it would be nice to know. But it's a, that's a right. nice to and not a. It's so much yeah. more important to have them there. Yes, it's more important <laughs> to have them to know. It's yeah, nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you all. Okay. Thank you, Sylvie. Next, discuss options for animal. Control officer and animal inspector for fiscal year 2025. So yeah. this will be for well, it started July 1st, but uh, I've been uh, Rick Amchek called me the other day and said that he intends not to seek reappointment okay. for those positions. So um, if anybody's interested in those high paying municipal jobs, little thanks, then yeah. Um, I have no idea who would have the I mean the basic knowledge for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a certification course. I mean there is a regional animal control program which I'll which I'll look into to see yeah. what that entails, but um, I think we, 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 we may we certainly have to consider that. Yeah. yeah. If if anybody's interested in it, listening. Then they can email yeah. community development at no I'm just kidding. <laughs> if it's part of me, can you describe roughly what the job yeah, entails? Yeah, yeah, what does the job entail? Um so it's it's animal control officer and animal inspector. The animal inspector part is the you know, inspecting barns, inspecting livestock, it's that type of it's that role. And the animal control officer is dealing with um I mean a lot of it is, it is dogs or wild animals that people need to yeah. have restrained or, or yeah. taken out of deal away from them to keep people safe. So um, you know it's I, I'm not gonna lie, it, it's it's certain situations are probably are I shouldn't say probably certain situations are tough to deal with, I'm sure. 
Um, so it's yeah. it's certainly not an easy job. But with that being said, it's good to be available. Would, this, would, would you agree with the statement? This is a good job for someone who cares about the ultimate safety of our animals and people both. Yes. Um, and so you need really knowledge of both yes. yep. animals and people. And yeah, okay. Yeah, I think we have a volunteer who just turned his camera on. <laughs> I have a comment I'd like to make. Okay, yes. Um, in seeking somebody for this position, also consider um, the availability. Uh, that's one of the problems that we've, we've run into with Rick, especially during the day, dealing with animal complaints, dog complaints, things like that, is um, having yeah. somebody that respond. That's that's kind of the key thing. Uh, it doesn't doesn't help us much if we don't have somebody that can that can respond out to a scene to to take custody of a dog or something of that nature. <clears throat> that's the difficult part from a law yes. enforcement. We, we Absolutely, but it's also difficult to respond if we don't have anyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And I know we work and closely can, with. The, I can't imagine somebody who would be available twenty four seven for an unpaid or barely paid job. Exactly. So, yeah. And I know we work closely with the uh, regional shelter, um, with the staff there. So um, I know, Brian, when you look into that, we can maybe discuss a little bit more because I know the people that work there and we have a good working relationship with them. So there's probably going to be a little bit more of a, an investment to get them on board with it. But uh, in the big scheme of things, I know they have patrols. They have somebody on during the day they they have hired another person full time so they've got two people working different shifts so that's yeah. that's a good option as compared to somebody that can maybe respond occasionally yeah so, okay well, i'm sure brian will go through the big stack of applications that we get for the position and we'll <laughs> pick the most appropriate person or yeah or, or subcontract jim I'll, I'll be in touch to yeah, talking about different options because it, it honestly does impact the. I, I think yeah. it impacts the police the most. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times they're the de facto animal control officers. Mm -hmm. So you just okay. change your job job description. <laughs> just you know, I will just add that. Yeah, I, I think I know someone on the person. I consider Seamus for the position. <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's been to a number of animal control calls in the last year and a half. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next item. Date and time of the next annual meeting and schedule for budget planning process. Yeah, yeah. so we're looking ahead to to start the budget planning process. And typically we work backwards from the annual yep. town meeting date. Um so I have been notified well in advance by the moderator of um his not being available for most of, from the middle of April through the end of May. I believe that was the yeah. times. Um, so a town meeting prior to April 15th is, is really not doable, not workable. Um, our typical, well, pre-COVID, you know, we typically had it the last Tuesday in April, um, which the moderator wouldn't be available. And it, since since COVID, we we tend to have it the end of May or early June because we've had it outdoors at the elementary school. Um, mm -hmm. Now there is a process in place where if the moderator is unavailable, town meeting can appoint a temporary moderator during the meeting um, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so that's a possibility. Um, obviously, we would want somebody who's familiar and educated. With Somebody does the really process, nice. not a surprise. Um, or, um, so, but that's any time the moderator's right. not available, whether it's for illness or, or work or, or what have you. Um, or we could schedule the Dean you know, meeting later on. Uh, you know, early June is a possibility. Uh, I would go avoid June 11th because that's the uh, town election. That's a town election. Yeah. Um, so we could do some time early in June. Or 
after the election, but we need to have the budget adopted prior to the start of the new fiscal year, unlike the state, which can take forever to adopt the budget. Anyways, um, I, I think the later town meeting has actually served as well because it's given finance committees like for more time to get the school budgets in place and other there have been some last, last minute adjustments that we've made in the past years that we wouldn't have been able to make with a mid April meeting. And, and then there's no particular reason not to go say into June. Then I said propose maybe June fourth. Like I think June eighteenth is starting to get a little bit late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we're looking at a Tuesday. But... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only time where you would want it, I mean, sometimes you I don't I don't know of any um you know ballot um ballot votes that are gonna be needed. Yeah. Um that I can think of. That's the only time you would want to have it earlier where you could line up your meeting yeah. ground meeting. Yeah. And your I needed ballot vote, but yeah. I don't see that being the case. This upcoming year, yeah. So, so how does yeah. June for I, I I'd be fine with June. For the moderator, the moderator will be back. <laughs> so, and, and that just if, if that's the target date, that that's great. Um, and then that'll allow me to plan. Yeah, then yeah, we, we can work backwards in there. But if it was going to be sooner, then we got it. I got. I got. Yeah, tighten up you got to tighten up the schedule. Yeah. No, I think between not having the tighter schedule and having a moderator available going later. Yeah. There's I mean, no reason not to. It could be a little bit of an interesting year because the as you know, the, the governor just had to do some nine seat cuts um, yeah. to the state budget. So it that, that's because tax revenue is lower than what they right. what, what they were anticipating. So yeah. um, I heard that it doesn't hit locally though. The, the current the night current may night not hit locally. Too. Um, it, yes, we had this conversation with the Angola Rural Affairs Director and somebody took offense to that characterization because they had a earmark that was cut. Oh, well. But it did not hit, on, it did not hit locally. Yeah, unrestricted local. That's what I meant. Yeah. I didn't use the yeah. complete terminology there. Yeah. So somebody got yeah. yeah. it. Unrestricted is a key word. Yes. <laughs> somebody was, uh. Not happy. Uh, well, you know, choice they wouldn't because their earmark got slashed in half. They got the ear cut off. Mm -hmm. Slashes, but half is better than none, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Next All right. item. So, two, so we'll finalize the schedule for that prior yeah. to next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like Brian's got a right for as far as our and that's nothing we have right. to approve. But right. We yeah. We, we, Brian just. Uh, next item. We we'll appoint Don Bates to the Recreation Commission. I nominate Don Bates to the Recreation Commission. I second. Any discussion? Jim, no comments? Well, he's only a part time officer. Yeah, for us. <laughs> no, comment. no comment. No comment. Oh, that's right. We could. Oh, we could. We Oh, yes. Recreation Commission and, Re animal, and control animal control. And animal control. Okay. Uh, um, oh, okay. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Discuss and vote set mileage reimbursement rate for calendar year 2024. Uh, 67 cents a mile is what these said. Is that the IRS? Yep. IRS yeah. standard mileage rates, which we've always gone by. Yeah. Um, I'm good with that. Um, I make a motion that we set our mileage reimbursement rate to 67 cents a mile. Second. To be the federal government. Any further discussion? No. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Select board updates. I will start. Uh, the new SCEMS director, I believe. Will be approved that I'm supposed to be. There have been discussions with the negotiations with the Deerfield Town Board. I think they've been concluded and I will have details on start date. There's a SCEMS meeting next week, next Tuesday. 
sometime <laughs> whenever the next camp meeting is within the next week. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it. Yeah. And the only other thing is that Brian, Keith, and I have a meeting, preliminary meeting on Friday with the consultant for the new highway department building project. And we'll start talks about what it should be, where it should be. And we're still a long way for how, how do we pay for it. Yeah. But that is there. Joyce, any? Um, well, uh, the uh, uh, South County Senior Center Board of Oversight had uh, a retreat, which meant a two hour meeting on a Saturday morning with muffins, uh, <laughs> which the, they're not public expense muffins. These are days where I, I paid this time. Um, and uh, it was nice to have kind of a longer meeting where we could be a little more chatty. One of the things I just want to let everybody know that we're doing is we're um, going back and taking a closer look at our intermunicipal agreement, which is something like 10 years old, um, partly to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do, uh, and also to um, kind of see are there things there that we should consider updating or changing. There was uh, some work done. Oh, it's not in this folder. It's in a different folder. Um, uh, so or someone else took a look at our, uh, someone professional looked at our intermunicipal agreement, made some suggestions about some things we might consider. Um, so we've been uh, we're taking a close read on that. We're not done yet. It was only a two-hour meeting. Um, but that's that's going on in the background. We're also comparing what we're doing to, say, what Shelburne is doing, uh, Shelburne, Buckland, and Ashfield. Um, with their consortium for a, for a senior center. Um, and we, uh, we reviewed the budget for the upcoming year. Um, our senior center director continues to do awesome work. Um, there's a turnover in the staff. There was uh, a former assistant, uh, Sue Corey, who we said goodbye to, and a new person named Patrick, uh, whose last name I have to look up on an email. Um, who's uh, joining uh, as a new uh, program assistant and things are going really well. Numbers are going up and up and up. Uh, participation, people are are, are, um, are voting with their feet and coming to the senior center. Uh, at one point, I heard of what the room just said, thought that Conway might want to join. Yes, yeah, does, there is some. Does yeah. the intermunicipal agreement, does that, would it take to take no account having new tenants. That is definitely joined. something that was that's on the table. Um, but something similar happened with FCAT. FCAT started with three towns and then Conway joined. So yeah, yeah. we would definitely want to make sure that the wording in the agreement is yeah, it's absolutely that, that is one of the things consistent that with having another someone that, else come in. Yes, exactly. Otherwise it can get messy. Yeah. Yeah. Want mess. Anything else? Um that's it. Julie that's it for my liaisons. Any uh, I will be attending the water commissioners meeting on Friday, probably via Zoom. Um, and Brian and I both attended via Zoom um, a municipal seminar on flag flying. As Joyce had pointed out recently, there were some uh, questions in various towns around the Commonwealth about and and across the country about flying flags on municipal flag poles that, uh, touted yeah. one or another probably private citizen viewpoint um, because the, fl the flagpoles had been designated as areas for public discussion. Um, the takeaway that I had from that is that Waitley should make some kind of a policy about what's allowed to fly and not fly on um, town flagpoles so that we don't get caught unawares by, you know, the Waitley Pirate Society wanting to fly um, the Skull and Cross. Oh, the Waitley Pirate Society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Brian, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, I would agree that that it would be good to, I think, adopt a, a simple and clear and concise policy yep. as to what flags are allowed to fly um, in the absence of a policy 
the, the, the practice of the town or the, the past actions of the town and what controls how a court would, would view it. Um, and obviously that, even, even if you have a policy in place and you go against your policy and you allow it, you know, but the policy yeah. is a good statement in um, guidance for, you know, for, for the future. And so everybody's sort of on the yeah. same page about what, what the what the board wants to do so um yeah. okay yeah. yep anything else julie no that's it okay brian um just a reminder i i think sylvie emailed out the dlta oh, yeah. but, but we'll, we'll talk about those at the at the january 30th meeting okay all right uh, but just a reminder that we have that offer from burkog again to provide technical assistance um one one just just mentioning one uh, little change. Well, what it will change that in the past they've tried to keep each town like a piece of the piece of the pie. And this year right. they're saying, well, we'll, we'll we'd you rather do not get any pie this year. Right, you might not get any pie this year, but we'll try to give you pie in a couple of years. So yeah. Yeah. everybody will get. So there's some. Three, like on a three year rolling average, everybody might get some. Right. Pie. Um. Yeah. So I I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that every town got assistance every year, anyways. Um, yeah. But in practice, but um, the, the only other thing I was going to mention was Hidden Hill uh, Road reconstruction project. 100% design has been submitted um, to MassDOT. We're still waiting to hear back, and I followed up with uh, the state again about the Article 97 question um, in terms of. I don't know if you remember the soil nails, yeah. the subsurface yeah. soil nails that are going into outside of the right of way to oh, yeah. the watershed property, which is out of the 97, and whether those are uh, yeah. whether those are impacts that we need to mitigate under the act, under the, the public lands act. Um, but so in terms of next steps for for that project, um, you recall the 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 advertised date is October 20 is October 2025. Um, okay. So once 100% designs are approved by MASTA, then we have 100% approved right-of-way plans. So then the town's work um, in terms of acquiring the necessary right-of-way, that's really when that would start. Um, town council has begun the process of doing title searches um, on each properties to identify the, the who we believe the actual owner is, the actual legal owner of the property is. Um, and then once the title searches are done, then um, notice of intent letters need to be mailed out by the town to the property owners uh, with their specific information about you know what the town is looking to acquire from each parcel, um, and along with that will go out. Along with that will go out, and I forget what the proper term is, but it's essentially a, a request for a donation or a donation letter asking if the property owner would be willing to donate it to the town. So they throw it on if they're not willing to donate that needed land, then the town would go through an appraisal process. So we're going to need to hire, I, I'm assuming we're going to need to hire an appraiser um, because the town pays fair market value for land that yeah. needs to be acquired. Um, then there would be a process where we would come to an agreement as to what that value would be. Uh, there's obviously an appeals, you know, an appeals process that people feel agreed by what's being offered. And um, yeah, so that's that also include the mitigating land that we have to. Yeah, so that's on. also going to uh, that's also going to include what we need to provide in terms yeah. of mitigation. And then once we get all that squared away, then we still need time to file the well, not we, the city of Northampton. Once we know what the impacts are going to be on their land, their Article Ninety Seven land, and we need to work with the city of Northampton. To work with the city council to request the special legislation to remove whatever amount of land that been identified, which is going to depend on what how we characterize the soil nail wall, the soil nails. Um, we'll need to file special legislation to get that land removed. And as part of that process with the OEA, they're going to want to see the native mitigation equal to equal in um, monetary value and ecological value. So um, hmm. That will translate to some amount of land, preferably within the same watershed. But so that's 
that's a long process that we're about to start. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it is a it is a uh, it's a complete rebuild of the road, and it's being paid for through federal highway. So it, it's I mean, right. likely by the time we construct it, it's going to likely be I would guess probably around yeah. about a million dollar project. So uh, it's well worth it. The town's going to need to have some minor investment in terms of the property acquisition. That's our responsibility. Um, to do it and also in terms of the costs. So we may, you know, at some point yeah. we'll be looking at the, the special town meeting or town meeting or, or something yeah. like that if we can't pay for it or if we don't think it's wise to pay for it with our chapter 90 funds, depending on how much that is. So I mean, it's a start of a long process. Yeah, it's like we're going to have 18 months yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, we need to get started. It's going to be, it's going to, we're going to yeah. slug our way through it, and, but in the end, it's going to be worth it. So yeah and then as soon as that's done we start the paperwork for the next right redo the bridge, yeah. <laughs> no dude, next redo of hate oh yeah honestly we just had gotten it redone and i came to one of my first select board meetings yeah and lynn brings out the all right so hayville road reconstruction project and it was <laughs> yeah. the one that we're still going to now so that has been going on for a long yeah. time long. anything else yeah um, I, I, no, that's enough. <laughs> I, I, I have one more thing that I forgot. The uh, housing committee sent a letter to the owners of the property at Nine LaSalle Drive, which is a, you know, just driven up that little dead end, is a house that is just collapsed essentially with a, I think, a VW bus with vines growing on it in front of it. So, uh, contact the owner to see if there's something we can work with the owner in the town and maybe do something about affordable housing and like a habitat for humanity kind of thing or something. That's it. It's a preliminary a letter was sent. Okay. So we'll see if anything comes to that. But right now it's an eyesore piece of property. Yeah. And if we can turn something good out of it, that means it. Any items not anticipated? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. I second. Discussion? None. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.